What's up everybody? Today is Monday, January 6, 2020 awesome day today i did place a trade i will show you that trade today after um a couple of things guys i reached out to kevin avery he has a youtube channel trading uh, youtube channel it's called avery day trading i will put a link in the description to his youtube channel guys you guys are definitely going to want to subscribe to his channel guys i reached out to him for some advice i had a couple of questions and he replied guys let me show you his response Sponsor. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to his channel. He has some awesome content. Let me show you his responses to my questions. Traders, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Giovanni, for the invitation to do this video with you. Excited to get into some of these questions today. Some good tips, some good advice for new guys to start 2020 on a great note. So the first question is, having a small account, should we go all in every time? or break it up into several blocks? That's a great question, Giovanni. Unless you got a thousand people following you in a chat room, I'd suggest breaking it up into smaller blocks. Uh, you see a lot of the gurus out there, they do this. They'll start with a very small account, but the problem is they're trading these lower flow stocks. They got tons of people behind them that are easy, these stocks are easily manipulated. That's why it's so easy for them. Uh, but the thing you should focus on first of all and foremost is consistency. Uh, if you start with a $2,000 account and you're consistent, you should have no problem bringing in maybe roughly 50 bucks a day or a little bit more, you know, risking 25 bucks, making 50 bucks. Uh, you should have no problem doing that. And once you're consistent, everything else follows. You should be avoiding home run hits and just going for those base hits, going for those small singles uh, versus the home runs because you're going to get knocked out of the game quick. And if anyone's been trading for a long time, they know that experience in the market is your best teacher. You want that experience. Uh, just watching the professionals trade and seeing how they do it, you don't want to just jump in and emulate that. See, I can watch professional athletes play all day long, but then when I get out there on the field, I don't know what I'm doing. Even if I've been learning from through watching because I don't have the muscle memory or the experience, you know, it, your body just kind of takes over. The intuition kind of takes over in the market. You need that experience in the market. That's going to be your best friend. So go for singles. Don't try to get rich quick because that's just going to end in disaster. Focus on consistency everything else follows make 50 bucks a day you'll have no problem just adding a zero to the end of your order uh, to make that $500 a day 5,000 a day it's as easy as that next question what's something you know now about trading that you wish you had you knew when you first started trading this leads me to my second point perfectly when I first started trading like most this is about uh, roughly three years ago a little bit more than that uh, I overestimated the amount of profits I was gonna make and underestimated the amount of time it was gonna take to get there so just like I said experience is your best teacher that's your best friend just start small don't start with sacred money sacred money meaning money you need to pay your bills you want to start with a small enough amount of capital uh, so that you can get that experience behind you a lot of guys they start out with the 25k and then they blow it up quick the stock market there's a saying in the stock market that says the stock market makes rich people poor poor people rich there's a reason behind that because poor people don't have all that capital to blow up with at first they learn and then once you learn and you get consistent everything else follows quality versus quantity which is better should i trade more often or better to be selective and that's a great question giovanni one that i always didn't understand and there needs to be a balance it really needs to be both see i used to think that it was just quality and that's all you could trade and i would go kind of all in like your first question on that trade so i would say okay this is the best setup the pocket pair of aces i'm only going to focus on this stock and i'm pretty much going all in uh, and that is a that's a very dangerous place to be see the stronger your opinion the stronger your bias on a stock the harder it is to get out of it so when i would get in the way of just probabilities then i'd say okay this is the best setup out there this is what i want to be in i'm marrying this ticker essentially putting all the chips in and it, it's just swinging for the home run and then when it doesn't work out yeah you know it turns into disaster uh, for your account real real quick so you need to work in probabilities you need to not only just trade the best setups which are the a quality setups 
but you can also trade B quality subs. You don't have to just trade uh, the pocket pair of aces. You can trade pocket pair of kings. You can trade pocket pair of queens. You can trade, uh, you know, really good setups, but they don't all have to be the high quality. So quantity does play a factor because let's say you are 60% consistent. You want to have more than one trade out there because the probabilities are going to be working for you. It's the same thing in a casino. In a casino, there's more than one blackjack table. There's more than one poker table. There's a lot, there's more than one, you know, slot machine. There's a lot of them working together. Now, one may pay out, so one may hit it big, but they have all of them working together. So where the house always wins. And we are the house when it comes to trading. So the probabilities work for you. Is quantity and quality? That's a great question. Next question, averaging down. Is that a good or a bad idea? It's a terrible idea, but don't confuse averaging down with scaling down. Averaging down means I'm just, that's my goal. I'm trying to get my average down. Where, where a scaling down to position is just you building to your full position size. So scaling down would say, okay, on this stock, I wanna have a thousand shares. So then let's say you're buying the dip as the stock's pulling down, but you only scale into a quarter position. So you got 250 shares. Then it keeps going further. You add another quarter, you're at 500 shares. That goes even further. And then you add uh, the other half, you had 500 shares. So now you've scaled down to your full position that you pre-planned uh, on this stock. And it's all about predefining your risk. You always wanna predefine your risk before you ever enter a trade. And this is where that plays a factor, is scaling down to position. So don't confuse scaling down to averaging down. Averaging down would say, okay, I'm at full position, but you know, I wanna you know, add more risk to this trade. And that's what amateurs do. They average down, they adjust their risk parameters mid-trade. That's what amateurs do. We wanna avoid that. We wanna predefine that risk before we enter a trade. And, and that way there's nothing to be worried about. You just let the trade play itself out. Next question is, for someone just starting out, what would you suggest not to do? Now, I suggest not listening to your emotions, number one. I suggest not listening to gurus, number two. I suggest not starting out with a ton of capital and sacred capital. Uh, I would suggest uh, you start out with disposable money, money that you plan and are expecting to lose as your market tuition to, you know, to get started. I would suggest not trying to hit home runs. I'd suggest not trying to get rich quick. I'd suggest not focusing on the money, but focusing on the risk. That's what a lot of amateurs do. They just, all they see is the money and then they end up going deer in headlights because they don't focus on the risk at all. Uh, so those are just a few for that question. That was a great question. The next one, what do you think makes a great trader? Would it be the amount of trades they make, the amount of money they make, the amount of money they trade with, the percentage gain per trade? Uh, I think it has nothing to do, honestly, with how much they make, how much they trade with. Uh, I think it does have to do with, are you consistent? That's what makes a great trader. Are you bringing in money from the market consistently? That's what a great trader is, because guess what? You're among the 10% at that point. You know, you're doing uh, what you need to do in order to make a lot more money. If you're making consistently $50 a day, there's no reason you can't consistently make 500, 5,000, uh, you know, or even more than that per day because you, you got it. That's all there is to it is finding your edge and trading that edge and trading it exclusively, accepting the risk, accepting the results and moving on. It's a probabilities game. So that's ultimately what makes a great trader. What doesn't make a great trader are those who are just results oriented. Oh, I made money on this trade, it was a green trade, that was a good trade, and that was a bad trade because it was a red trade. What makes a great trader is I followed my rules, I adhered to my rules, even if it was a loss. That's okay because it's a probabilities game. The casinos don't go, oh no, we just lost money because they understand the probabilities. I mean, they understand they're gonna make that money back. If you're consistent, there's nothing to worry about. It's all about quality and quantity, as uh, that was a great question, Giovanni. So that's gonna wrap up the video. Thanks for uh, letting us do this, man. I really appreciate it. I think it's gonna help out a lot of new traders out there. If you wanna become part of the 10%, among the 10% guys, Pick up my book, Among the 10%. Uh, it's going to be in the description below of this video. I really appreciate this time. It was an awesome time getting this going, Giovanni. Uh, don't forget, guys, hit the like button on this video. Hit the subscribe button to Giovanni. Got a ton of great content out there for you guys. And we will see you all next time. 
Thank you so much for that, Kevin. I greatly appreciate you responding to my emails and those questions. I know I appreciate it. I know my subscribers do. Again, guys, you don't want to miss out on any of those videos that he makes. He has some great content, lots of knowledge. You definitely want to subscribe to his channel. Also, I put a link in the description down below if you wanna go ahead and purchase his book. Lots of great information in that book, guys. Moving on to today's trade. I did place a trade, a good and a bad one, and I'm still in it, actually. Let's get down to the screen so I can show you that trade. We're looking at here is the middle chart is a one hour chart off to the far left is the one minute chart intraday chart of the 322 calls that I uh, traded today that expire in seven days and the small one here is a daily chart as you can see uh, we're still in an uptrend the last signal that we got on the daily chart is an up arrow so we're only trading calls here and before we start I'm going to show you the mistake that I made today I jumped the gun jumped the gun, I broke my rolls, and I paid for it. Um, I bought one call option of the 322 calls that expire in seven days, bought them at $2.63. You can see the time here. I bought 14 minutes before that candle actually closed, thinking that it was going to close above that upper MOBO band and I jumped the gun. I thought I was smarter than the markets. That is uh, a no-no, big no-no. And um, I only bought one knowing that I was buying in early and it just, it, it didn't, it didn't. And I ended up paying for it. I ended up selling at $2.52, you know, 20 minutes, 22 minutes after I bought it. So, and then finally got a signal here. Again, I was on my lunch break. I hate these signals that are coming in uh, when I'm on my lunch break. I bought a couple minutes before it closed, but I was really confident about this one. I bought two call options at 261. Um, again, the 322 calls that expire in seven days. And then, you know, 25 minutes later, something of that nature, I ended up selling one at $2.82 for an 8% gain. Uh, you can see here 282 right there. That's about where I sold. Yep. And I'm, I'm holding on to one. If you recall on my previous trades, what an end, ends up happening is um, it was this one right here. This was the very last one. Um, I would buy in, get my 10%, and then after hours it would go up just a tad bit higher and I don't want to risk it. And so I ended up selling completely only for it to open up tremendously the very next morning. That's uh, the last two trades it's happened. And hey, that's the way it goes. And I might lose my shirt on this trade. Who knows what's going to happen, guys. Stay tuned. Tomorrow's video is either going to be a really happy video or a really sad video. I'm not sure. I'm hoping for uh, the, the really exciting, happy video. Um, this is probably going to be the trade that doesn't actually gap up tremendously. Uh, that's just the way it goes, guys. But I wanted to show you today's trade. Sold for an 8% gain. Overall, I'm green on the day. I erased my mistake, thankfully. And I'm still holding on to one. So we'll see what happens, guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, watching today's video. Give it up for Kevin Avery. Greatly appreciate him. There's a link in the description down below. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, he has some awesome content. And on this one, if you haven't uh, liked my video, do that. It'll help me out tremendously. And also consider becoming my subscriber, guys. Thank you so much. See you here on the very next trading video, guys. Take care.